The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's the kickoff of Season 5. We're going to be talking about getting your seeds started indoors or should you buy them from your garden center, as well as jump-starting that outdoor garden. Our guest will be author Ellen Ecker Ogden, plus answering your garden questions. That all starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. I'm your host, Joey Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This show is about you, for you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, make your trees look green and your grass look healthier, as well as canning what you grow. There's many different ways in which you can get a hold of us, but we want to thank you for tuning in to the kickoff of Season 5 here in 2021, whether you're listening to us on your radio, whether you're listening to us on a radio app, one of the 15 stations that are broadcasting our program here in 2021, through our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, or anywhere in between, podcast replay or in-studio video replay. Thank you so much for being with us. We are here to help your garden grow better. If you've got a question, you can certainly get a hold of us during the show, after the show, our uh, communication lines are always available for you. You can email us at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd rather talk to us, you can give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW. And if we can't get you on the show, leave a message. We will call you back. we got a big show lined up for you. So let's get it kicked off right now. We're going to talk about should you grow and start your seeds indoors, or should you buy them from the garden center? This segment is brought to you by Happy Leaf LED Grow Lights. Yeah, this segment is sponsored by Happy Leaf LED Grow Lights, proudly made in the USA. A grow light for beginners or advanced indoor gardeners. They have a universal use LED recipe that means you just turn it on and watch your leafy greens, herbs, vegetables, any plant really grow and thrive. It's the Anywhere Anytime Garden, a professional grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors, just plug in and grow. Find out more, visit happyleafled.com. So when we talk about should we start our seeds indoors uh, or should we not, it, there's not a hard answer. It really comes down to an individual and the situation which that individual has. Now, we want to we're going to consider we're going to go over a couple of considerations for if you decide to start your seeds indoors or if you decide to grow start uh, to buy them at your garden center. We're going to give the pros and cons to both and then let you determine which might work best for you. Now, just as a disclaimer, Holly and I, we grow the majority of the plants in which we put in our garden, whether direct seed or start indoors. Now, there has been years where we've had indoor plant failures in which we've had to buy our plants. And we do support our local independent garden center and purchase a few plants in which, you know, flowers or shrubs or or bushes, berry bushes that we just don't start from seed and are already in a mature state. So uh, let's talk about some of these things here. And sometimes it's just what happens. You know, you might start all of your pepper seeds and they just don't do well and that's okay. Or you go to the garden center and you are just looking and then you come out with $149 worth of stuff <laughs> and then you got to figure out what you're going to do with it because you had gardener buyer envy or what. I don't know what you want to do. I think it's called like a shopper's high yeah. or something. I don't know. So let's talk, if we're going to start our seeds indoors, we need to figure out where we're going to start them indoors. Are we going to do a basement, uh, a bedroom like we do? We do in the side bedroom and, and consider it a grow room. In a garage, in a greenhouse, are these places climatized, unclimatized? How is the heat source? Because that's the key here. We got to get these plants warm, the root zone, the soil, in order for them to germinate. Otherwise, it's not worth the effort. Right. So that's definitely one thing you want to consider is is where. So for us, we have it in our cor- cor- corner of our living room area thing, and it's right by a radiator. 
So that will give them the proper heat for starting your seeds. Now, once we have established that, we want to figure out what are we going to grow in. Are we going to use a root maker grow tray? We're going to use the peat pellets, which are great to start with, but not so much in the long term. I will answer a question in that in, uh, in the uh, latter portions of the program, uh, whether or not the and how to deal with that. But peat pellets are not the great source because they don't have no nutrients. They're great for the seed to get established, then take the netting off and, and up pot them. But overall, they're, they're not that great. Um, and I think that's a, a common misconception is that <clears throat> they're often sold as like um, all you need, right? Yeah. Or something like that. And people don't realize that they're no just... No fail. <laughs> yeah, no fail. They're just basically peat, more or less, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a little netting. And you do need to, after a couple of weeks, add some sort of fertilizer, whether it be liquid or um, something that you can give to those plants so that they have something to grow off of. So an another thing that what we like to do is we use um, we use uh, party cups for a lot of right. our seed starting. And then, you know, we, we need to figure out a benefit to starting your seeds indoors, Holly, is the variety, the endless varieties of different types of tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. The list goes on of what you can grow. For example, if you go to Seed Savers Exchange, you buy, or you go to their little kiosk, you buy a pack of seeds, uh, pepper seeds for three or four dollars, uh, and you get 50 pepper seeds. You buy three or four dollar pack of tomato seeds, you get 25. And they have dozens upon dozens of varieties to choose from. And for four dollars, you've got fifty potentially fifty pepper plants that, if you save the seeds for, you'll have poundages of pepper seeds for the years to come, type of thing. So the variety is there. There's a very easy, uh, even hard selection to make sometimes because there's so many choices, which one can choose in order to start indoors uh, for their garden. Right. So. Yeah, you want to think about where you're going to get your seeds, what you're going to grow. Um, as Joy mentioned, we have 38 pepper seedlings right now. But this is a decision that you have to make. You don't have to start your seeds inside. You don't even have to buy seedlings. You can just throw them into the, the soil at, and read the back of the, the package. But um, we've learned that we did a survey through our YouTube page that 76% of you try to start as many seeds as possible, and then 24% of you buy your starts so let, let the key to indoor growing i mean we grew for years without using a grow light and since we found the happy leaf led grow light our plants uh going out into the garden to transplant are as healthy if not healthier than the garden center plants in which we purchase now a couple of years back we talked with the owner about some indoor growing but what he's what Vic's going to explain is not only growing over the winter but there's people that grow year round indoors because they don't have the availability to do it outside so we're going to take a little listen to what Vic has to say here so keep keep that in mind so growing indoors over winter with a happy leaf LED there's a couple of things that somebody who is not familiar with that practice needs to know Right. So, you know, we've spent a lot of time figuring out how you can grow successfully indoors. And the easiest things to start with are things like microgreens, lettuces, and herbs. But you can grow tomatoes, cucumbers, beets, carrots, anything you want. But the key is light. And, you know, we've all known that you need water, you need the right nutrients. But light has always been the missing element. So in the past, people have built greenhouses to bring light in. But greenhouses are expensive to build. You need the space. The days are still short in the winter. You have to heat them, and you still have a lot of cloudy days. Now, with high-quality LED lights, you can actually get 16 to 18 hours of growth or photosynthesis. They grow quickly. They have the right level of light. There's no cloudy days. And because your home is already heated and has the right humidity levels, you don't have to control the environment or do any kind of special heating like you would in a greenhouse. So Happy Leaf has spent a lot of time over the last few years making it possible to have an indoor greenhouse basically on a baker, baker's rack. Get yourself a baker's rack, put a light on it, and grow your plants. We advocate a process called passive hydroponics made or developed by a professor by the name of Dr. Bernard Kratke at the University of uh, Hawaii. But the truth is you can use any method you want as long as you have the right amount of light. And now it's possible and 
the Happy Leaf LEDs were actually designed to give you the right spectrum. A lot of grow lights made in China or even various parts of the U.S. Or the standard tube light that we're familiar with. Well, a tube light or a fluorescent, yeah. they don't give you nearly the amount of light. They probably want five times not enough. And even the grow lights that just have white LEDs are not the optimal grow light. You want red light. And so red light with the right ratio can increase your growth by 250% with the same amount of energy use if you have the right spectrum. And the Happy Leaf LEDs were designed specifically to be able to do that. And you've got several sizes available from 4 inch to 17 to 33, is that correct? Correct, correct. So basically the 33 was designed to cover an area of a 3 foot baker's rack. The 17 can do like a two foot area pretty much. And the little four inch light really is intended to do a couple of jars on your kitchen countertop. Or even at the office. Or at the office. A lot of our customers just buy it so they can do something on the office under with a plant. But uh, yeah, the 17 and the 33 are really the most practical if you're trying to grow some food at home or even your flowers. And to find out all about the Happy Leaf LED grow lights, go to happyleafled.com. So with the Happy Leaf, you can grow inside, you can grow year-round. But what if you just want to buy at the garden center? What are the pros and cons? Well, there's a couple of pros, one being the plants are already done growing. I mean, they're, they're already the, the work is done for you. You just go pick up the tomato plant, the pepper plant you want, take it home, put it in the ground. However, the selection on the negative side, the selection is very limited because garden catalog, 60, 70 varieties, garden center, 8 to 15 maybe. That's another thing is that you are at the, at the mercy of their selection. So if there's a type of tomato or pepper or what have you that you absolutely love and they don't have it this year, then you might be out of luck growing it this year. And the other thing, as we talked about earlier, we, you know, you spend, let's say, $4 for a pack of 50 pepper seeds at Seed Savers. You're going to go to the garden center. Most garden centers, you're going to buy one pepper plant for about three dollars and fifty cents and here we've got 38 started in the window uh in party cups that will be transitioned over the root maker trays for you know three dollars and fifty cents we've got 38 plants basically growing for that value so um it, it all depends on on how what works for you your budget if you're a newbie this can be very overwhelming no matter which way you look at it do i start season doors do i invest in multiple dollars at the garden center do i try to balance and do a little bit of both um and that's what we're here for garden talk radio at gmail.com more than happy to help uh there is no right answer or wrong answer to buy the plants or start them indoors it's uh there, there's pros and cons for for both of them right so the garden of Joy and Holly Radio Show is brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Incorporated. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from. Canning and preserving your fruits and vegetables is great. But what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage and jerky and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created meatjustics.com an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, and sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's, everything but the meat. Again, that's waltonsinc.com. Do not go anywhere when we come back. You want a little help jump-starting your garden? We're going to cover that and what you need to do to be successful early on before the spring hits and the rush happens. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. We here at the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show Gardens understand that healthy soil is the key to a successful garden. We know that chemical fertilizer burns carbon out of the soil and kills the microbes needed for a healthy soil ecosystem. No worries. Chicken Soup for the Soil by Dr. Jims will stimulate life into your soil, supplying all the nutrients most fertilizers neglect. Rather than force-feeding water-soluble chemical fertilizer, we suggest feeding the microbes a smorgasbord of 100% biodegradable nutrients that your plants can consume when they need them. The nutrients are readily available to maximize their genetic potential. Chicken Soup for the Soil will increase the quality of the fruit and vegetables you grow. Visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z.com. 
we've been using a game-changing tool called Seedlinked to find and review our seeds this year. It makes finding the right seeds simple. It is driven by grower's data so you can really see what's best for your location. Check it out at seedlinked.com or download the mobile app today. If you're sick of having a thin, poor colored lawn, despite all the fertilizing you do, you're not alone. The problem is the soil. It's compacted or clay-like, and basically there's not enough air in the root zone for healthy, vibrant growth. But this can be fixed a lot easier than you may think. Introducing Aerify Plus liquid soil aerator. Aerify Plus from our friends at Nature's Lawn breaks up and revitalizes the soil, allowing life-giving air and nutrients to get to the roots of your lawn and your garden too. Garden Talk listeners, you can get 10% off Aerify Plus by going to natureslawn.com slash garden talk. That's natureslawn.com slash garden talk. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Use coupon code RADIO21 and get 15% off your entire order. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975 and today continues to provide those seeds for gardeners just like you. They have over 600 varieties. Visit SeedSavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's SeedSavers.org. Rinse Kit, your hose on the go. No pumping, no batteries. Simply fill from your spigot or sink on your way out for up to five minutes of spray time anywhere. Spray it, wash it, rinse kit. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Dripworks, Waltons Incorporated, Tree Diaper, Janie's Mill, Phylum Bioproducts, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Nature's Lawn and Garden Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Dr. Jim's, Root Maker. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Happy you've hung around. First segment, uh, hope that helped starting seeds indoors or buy them at your garden center, the plants. Uh, in a moment, we're going to talk about how to get that seed, that, that get your garden jump started. But first, a word from our good friends at Tree Diaper. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water on the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. The Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. Every time it rains, Tree Diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees, whether they are by the house, down the road, or in the back 40. Also works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA. Check out all the sizes they have available. Go to TreeDiaper.com. That's TreeDiaper.com. So, let's, you know, we all want to be that gardener that has everything planned out and everything's happening correctly and the plants grow and not a failure in the world but that's simply not the case but we can offer you some advice on how you can jump start your spring garden and i'm not necessarily meaning you know we'll go over we've got several points here in which you may have not you know thought about and sometimes you think about it when you it's already too late and sometimes people think jump starting means like um being the first to put something into the ground and sometimes that's, that's not, not always, always no, the best no. idea. And yeah. there's other things you can do if you're itching to get outside. You know, you have a beautiful Saturday and you're like, I don't want to plant this stuff yet. There's other things you can do. Right. So one the, thing would the, be The to, saying is I'd much rather plant my tomatoes the first time than the second time when my neighbor plants him, his the first time. Yeah. So, okay, go so ahead. So one thing you can do is go through your tools. Um, now, this is not the most exciting thing for everybody, maybe for some of you, but this will help you because then when it's time to use those tools, you'll be ready to go. So say you have this rusty old clippers and every fall you're like, I'm going to get rid of these and get new ones. 
now is the time. Uh, we've done that where we've used a tool. It hasn't been that great or it's been broken and we throw it in the shed. We forget about it and, oh, we need that tool. and Oh, it's broken. Then we try to use it broken the following year. And it's frustrating. Yeah. So go through your tools. Um, you know, you got some half broke shovel or whatever rake or whatever. You're like, this is terrible. Why do I keep using this? Do that now. And then you'll be excited, and then you'll be ready. Uh, think about your containers. What kind of containers did you grow last year? Are you using grow bags? Do you need more grow bags? Uh, what are, are you using ceramic t- uh, t- uh, ceramic pots? Did they crack? Do you need to replace them? You know what 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 needs to be done that can be done now, or at least prepare so when the time comes, temperature warms up, the soil in that container that's broken is thawed out. You can replace it. Right. That's. Definitely a good idea. Broken supports. So maybe you you broke or uh, just whatever. Something happened to whether it be a tomato cage or a trellis um, and you need to replace it. You need to fix it. You need to take some baling twine and put it back together. All right, or you just get the easy step plant support system and, and be done with it and you never have a broken, broken container again. Um, you know, and re- replace things that, and get rid of things that aren't beneficial to you, that actually take more time to use than what it's worth, meaning the broken tool, th- that right. type of or thing. or maybe you bought maybe you bought some garden gadget or somebody gave you a garden gadget and you're like, As seen is, on TV. <laughs> you're like, this is never, garbage. Never fail again, yeah. <laughs> um, and you are like, you know what? That person never comes over here. I'm just going to sneak this into the trash. And you find something that works for you. Uh, or, or in your case, throw it in the Lake Michigan. We don't... Em- <laughs> We don't recommend throwing stuff into lakes. I joke about heaving stuff into Lake Michigan, but I literally do not heave things into Lake no, Michigan. No. Um, so you want to look for deals on bulk material. This might be a time where, like last year, we converted to raised beds. Maybe you want to expand your container garden, but look for, for look for those deals. Shop around. Ask your social media friends. Because bulk material is a fraction of the cost as bag material. For example, brand name stuff about a your a, a bag of a uh, brand name potty or a uh, compost in a bag is about twenty two to twenty five dollars. You can get a half of a yard at the, our local garden center for twenty five dollars. Half a yard, a full yard is twenty seven cubic feet of soil. So think about that. Also, now if you're a new gardener or last year was your first year, you want to take this in consideration if you're looking to buy any of these products, you know, the bulk material, the seeds, tools, because of the massive amount of people who are now back into or began to garden because of the pandemic, there can be and very likely will be sellouts and shortages of some items in the gardening world. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so you also can build cold frames or low tunnels. And so the benefit of having a cold frame or a low tunnel is this will literally help you jumpstart your plants once they're in the ground or putting them in the ground. Some people even use them to as like a way to start their seeds. Now, a cold frame or a low tunnel for people who are not familiar, it's essentially a miniature greenhouse that physically sets on the ground that the heat radiates through the four mil plastic or the uh, plastic, plastic, hard plastic uh, that the, the warms the soil in which you can start planting those seeds or transplanting seeds much, much earlier. The only thing you need to be aware of is just because the ambient temperature outside picking a, uh, picking a range is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, inside that cold frame, it can be 80, 85 degrees. So you need to be aware that you're not baking your plants. Uh, in such a tunnel that you are able to vent and understand the proper uh, physics of of a low tunnel or cold frame. Right, that's definitely. What if point. I wanted? What if I'm wanting to start a garden this year? What do I do? Well, one thing you want to do for sure is you want to decide where you're going to put that garden and how you're going to how you're going to grow a garden, whether that be a container raised better in the ground. And if you're going to grow in the ground, you want to decide where you're going to put that and call. Digger's hotline, 72 72 72 business hours before you're going to dig. So say you're like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this this weekend. So now you have... The clock is ticking because God forbid. What, what, you, is, what does Digger's Hotline do? First so of all, people hotline, have not heard this. Sure, Digger's Hotline is a free service, and you want to give them a call. Free, free, free. Yeah. free. And it's it's for you. It's to help you. It's to protect you as well, because um, you don't know what's underneath your soil. You may have lived on that land for so much time, 
or whatever, but you you probably don't know. Well, whenever so, we whenever we had our underground utilities marked in our front yard, we never saw so many colors spray painted on the grass. <laughs> we had yellow lines and blue right. lines and red lines, and we had yeah, we we're like okay now what do we do because there's where we want to go yeah there's a whole two feet that we don't we can't dig yeah yeah so like a whole two feet strip i mean with what with yeah yeah. so yeah you don't you don't necessarily know what's underneath there um so you want to call them they're going to come out they're going to mark the area they're going to tell you you know um stay a foot away from this area if you're going to dig and da, da 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 and in this area you can dig with hand tools but not a shovel and this is for your safety because what if you start digging and then you hit something and you break something or I, I don't even know. You hit electrical line and, and bad things happen. Here's the other thing. I would recommend calling Digger's Hotline even if you don't intend to dig and you're just putting raised beds on top of the ground. For the simple fact is if there is an underground utility that needs to be emergency emergencyly worked on, they don't care if you've got tomatoes in a raised bed. They're going to come in and move your stuff out of the way in order to fix that problem because there's many other people that are relying on that service to be restored. So just so you have an idea of, okay, if I move the bed over here, it won't be on top of that conjunction box or whatever's on the ground. Right. And for the most part, you're not going to have run into too many situations where you're not going to be able to dig where you want to dig. In our front yard, we live very close to the main road, so that probably has a lot right. to do with it. Let's uh, talk about buying seeds. Uh, we talked about the bulk material and equipment being, there will be limitations and probably sold out and shortages of it. Seeds are no different. And right now we are seeing that with our seed supplier, Seed seed, uh, seed Savers Exchange. They are on a delay on servicing uh, orders because there's such a backlog. Uh, 16 to 18 million new gardeners started growing last year on the conservative side. Uh, so everybody, and th- it's not just seeds. There's other seed stores that are doing that same thing, holding off on receiving orders to get rid of that backlog in which they have uh, because they're seeing such enormous uh, demand for the seeds. So if, for, for our seed supplier, they have kiosks all over. You can go to Seed Savers Exchange and click on the little kiosk and find out where they're at. You can get them there. It, you can also support your own garden center by buying in from there. Uh, very quickly, when this, when you, wherever you're at, whether you're in Denver, you're in Boston, you're in Kansas City, when the weather breaks, you are going to see these seed shells dissipate very, very rapidly. Right. You're going to see a lot of things dissipate very rapidly, especially um, because people who gardened last year for the first time, now they have ideas like, I, I prefer this over this, or I want to do this versus this. Well, with this. that 16, 18 million yeah. conservative, 86 per them, 86% of those are going to regarden again, and 76% of those are extending or expanding the garden in which they had last year. Right. That's massive. Right. Like, you know, it's it's enormous. It's, it's a big thing. Yeah. So that's something you want to think about. Um, one thing you want to do is definitely reflect on last year's garden i'm sure we've all reflected if you live in a northern climate thinking about right. warmer days ahead but think about what you grew that you were like this was awesome this was great and then maybe you grew something that you were like this didn't work out so well um do your research maybe it was just a bad year for it maybe you want to try something new maybe you want to um maybe you want to move stuff around maybe you think i want to move this over here so i have this space or but, but if you've grown something or attempted to grow something three, four, five years and you failed every year, it may not be you. It may be your soil, your climate. Put something else in there that you've had phenomenal success with because, for example, we can't grow cauliflower or broccoli. We're going to piddle around with the cauliflower thing this year. Uh, but wa- you know, we can buy a head at the, at the farmer's market for a dollar or and, and put a tomato in that spot where that cauliflower was going to be and get 15, 20, 25 pounds of tomatoes off of it um, for a very, you know, very good return on investment. So some things to keep in we're mind. Gonna, we're going to grow cauliflower? Oh, we're going to put a couple of couple of plants uh, in the starter tray and see what we what we do. It's been five, six years. We'll see, we'll see what happens um, with it um, and see if we can make it happen. So uh, it's something to think of. So some things to get your garden jump-started this spring. Soon it will be warming up, and you want to make sure you can enjoy your yard without beetles and grubs. With spring just around the corner... It's time to start thinking about controlling beetles and grubs in your garden or yard. We've pulled up some Japanese beetle articles um, recently, and they are going to be on the rise. 
Grub Gone can be applied to turf or garden or around ornamentals to control grubs and lessen the impact that beetles have on your yard this summer. It's easy to apply with any commercial spreader or irrigate into the soil. Biologically, it specifically targets in beetle invaders without harming beneficials like bees, ladybugs, and butterflies. And to be honest, it's the only non-chemical that works. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. Again, that's P H Y. L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com. When we come back, Ellen Eckert Ogden will be with us. Author, uh, don't go away. Great conversation to be had moments away. Do you tweet? Send Joey and Holly a tweet to at Talk Gardening and they will tweet you back. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit propugger.com. Did you know that all flour is not created equal? Janie's Mill carefully stone grinds all their certified organic wheat, rye, corn, buckwheat, and heirloom and ancient grains so that you get every bit of taste and nutrition nature intended. Some flowers really are better than others, and you deserve the best. Get it at janiesmill.com. Joey here of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And like you, we've struggled to find a good plant support system that can last for more than one season or two and be easily stored. But now there is. Easy Step Products manufactures a unique multifunction and multi-purpose plant support system. It's designed for tomato plants, but it's useful for any vegetable and flower plants you're growing. This is like having a 24-7 bodyguard for your plants. The 60-inch heavy-duty Easy Step end post and Easy Rings are overbuilt by design so that when you combine the two together, they make the perfect plant support system on the market. I love that you can add the rings during the growth cycle without damaging the plant. It's easy to adjust them up and down and they store so easily. They even have a no-hassle 10-year warranty and they're made in America. Order now and receive a third plant support absolutely free with purchase of any kit and use promo code JOEY123. Buy yours today at EasyStepProducts.com or visit the dealer locator for closest retailer near you or purchase at Mother Earth News General Store. EasyStepProducts.com If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts. Internal Wood Stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloominteasyplants.com. Do you need to kill weeds organically or melt ice quickly? Visit TigerTorchLTD.com for more information. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Simply Earth, Seed Savers Exchange, Quick Snap Sprinklers, Water Hoop, Timber Pro Coatings, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Pomona Universal Pectin, Ivy Organics, Tiger Torch, Happy Leaf LED, Seed Link. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Mar- moments away, Ellen Eckert Ogden will be with us. First, let's talk about a company called Rescue. Yeah, so Rescue has a bird seed moth trap. Now, the interesting thing is that there are dormant moth eggs that start to hatch as the weather warms up in early spring. And this is not just outside. This can be in your grain, your flower, um, your bird seed. If you've been storing bird seed over the winter ready for the spring, these moths could live in there as well. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. And same thing with your grain. So they have these traps that are they become preassembled in a hard plastic shell. They're a sleek design. They can be tucked away on a shelf or hanging from 
the provided hang tab. You can find all this at Amazon, um, participate in ace true values and do it best stores you're just going to go to rescue.com that's r-e-s-c-u-e.com and it's going to have everything you need for those moths that might be coming your way let's go to the hotline holly and bring in our guest for this week ellen ecker ogden is a nationally recognized author who provides kitchen garden design tips and recipes through newsletters books and design workshops her website is ellenogden.com. Welcome to the program, Ellen. Thank you, Holly. Well, Ellen, Delighted to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. Uh, let's start out with this question. What exactly is a kitchen garden compared to like a backyard garden or a side garden? What, what is the, the definition of such thing? Well, um, it's a good question. It's, uh, it's not a garden that's in your kitchen, but it's a garden that's outside of your kitchen. It's typically smaller than a victory garden, um, and it's but it's designed to fit near the kitchen door to grow those culinary herbs and delicate greens that a cook uses on a daily basis. And it's a way to grow food that's maybe a little bit more beautiful to open up the senses to all the flavors and the fragrance and, you know, f- food. You know, it's, food is a beautiful, beautiful um, plant and um, sometimes when we grow them in a in a big garden, we forget that it, it's nice to take time to really appreciate the form and the color. So it's not necessarily a you only can grow this in the kitchen garden, but there's just more of a tighter guideline in order to get those herbs and those fragrances and even some flowers that will waft into the kitchen through the back door type of thing. <laughs> Yes, well, I've always grown food that um, I've, I've selected food based to grow. Excuse me, I've I've I typically grow food that I can't buy in the grocery yeah. store, and so I really seek out hard to find um, culinary greens and, of course, heirloom vegetables. Um, but I was inspired when I went to cooking school at the Ballymolo School of Cookery in Ireland, and. That's when I was really introduced to the idea of what's called a European potager, which is a more intimate garden where, you know, the design is, is more beautiful. It combines flowers and food and herbs all together in one place. That sounds that sounds really pretty. And really, I think as a gardener, just being immersed, it almost sounds like um, in that in that garden area around you sounds really nice now in your newest book the new heirloom garden you provide a lot of great info recipes etc for those who don't know what are heirloom plants Um, well heirloom seeds are open pollinated which means that you can grow a plant and let it go to seed and you can save the seed and grow the same plant again um, which you can't really do with hybrid seeds, which um, a lot of seed catalogs sell these days. And um, hybrids were really introduced around 1950, and they're supposed to be more disease-resistant, more vigorous. You know, they've been bred by plant breeders. But a lot of the older heirloom varieties, I think, have a lot more flavor. They're kind of more interesting in terms of, uh, the types of plants that they grow, and of course, things like fragrance when you're talking about wonderful old fashioned flowers is is really important. Now we get this question a lot. Uh, people, new gardeners seem to gravitate towards the hybrid ones because of the ease, but we enjoy the heirloom ones for many of the reasons that you just stated. But why are hybrid plants? seem to be so more so much more difficult to grow than or the heirloom plants seem to be much more difficult to grow than the hybrid ones um well um you know they they're not uh, what do, well what do you think i don't happen to think that they are that much more difficult i mean i think some plants maybe are the heirloom tomatoes are not as disease resistant but i would much rather plant a tomato with great flavor than worry about the disease resistance. I think that a lot of disease in gardens really has to do with how the gardener treats their plants. Do you have wonderful organic soil? Are you giving the plants enough room to grow? Are you feeding them, you know, good good soil? There's just a lot of a lot of things that can contribute to a successful garden. Right. I I agree. Um definitely take some 
I think just uh, it's kind of the art of gardening for sure. Now, um, just for, for those who just come in, we are talking with Ellen Eckert Ogden. She's a nationally recognized author. Um, then the website is ellenogden.com. Uh, one thing about heirloom plants, I think a lot of people think about tomatoes when they hear heirloom. I know we grow heirloom leeks. What are some other common heirloom plants that people might not even realize that they're growing already? Oh, well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, well, in the new Heirloom Garden book, I have theme gardens because I wanted to give suggestions for different types of plants that people could grow. And so each of the designs is set up with a different theme. So, for instance, there's the Ark of Taste Garden, which is based on the slow food endangered species. So there's some wonderful old Italian artichokes, you know, suggestions to grow art, uh, artichokes or amaranth or some old beans that, um, you know, maybe are not readily available in a lot of catalogs. But most of the varieties that I recommend in the designs are available um, in catalogs. It just sometimes takes a little bit more searching for the varieties. So to answer your question, things like um, the rubine Brussels sprouts. It's an old-fashioned red Brussels sprout rather than the green Brussels sprout. Or the um, uh, Merlot lettuce or the Osaka purple mustard or, or a Caribbean du Moussain pea, which is an old French variety, which is, which is a, a lovely, um, has a lovely purple flower to it before it blooms, I mean, before it, you know, makes its seed pod. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we've lost a lot of the varieties over the over the last hundred years, in which if we had today, we would be amazed at the beauty and the taste in which they provide. <laughs> yes, it's fun to go back and look at the old seed catalogs and see which which varieties are still being sold. For instance, the the um, Bloomsday Long Standing Spinach that was developed over 200 years ago, and it's still absolutely the best spinach you can grow in your garden. It's a wonderful thick leaf spinach that's good in the spring and also in the fall. Um, and so it's it's fun to see what people used to grow 100 years ago. Of course, rutabagas and turnips and all these things that we, we don't really even know what they look like anymore. Right. What is a helpful tip from your book that would intrigue our listeners? Oh, um, well, in my book, The New Heirloom Garden, I, ha- I actually have it divided into three parts. The first part is step-by-step, which really covers basics of designs, because I'm essentially more of a garden designer um, and a cook than I am you know, a how-to gardener kind of person. But I like to, to lay out the foundation of how to design the garden and then um, how to start seeds and seed selection and, of course, seed saving. And then in the middle section of the book, they're designed. So their designs are, are meant to inspire rather than say, this is how you have to do it, but just ideas and suggestions. And then the final part are recipes because I'm a cook and I love to garden, and I feel that the two go together hand in hand. And so the recipes are set up um, by plant families because I don't. I think we've sort of forgotten that that there are such a thing as plant families. So the sunflower family, for instance, has artichokes and calendula and cardoon and chicory and lettuce. Um, and then there's the brassica family, um, and you know each of these families, the, the nightshade family, the eggplant and the peppers and the potatoes. Um, you know, it's just nice to to remember that these plants that we're growing in our garden do have some common traits. Well, the recipes look great. The pictures are even more fabulous. Uh, if 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 Holly and I could just mimic half of what the picture looks like at the end result of the dish, I think we got it made. Because <laughs> there were some pretty pretty pictures in the back of that book uh, in your recipe oh, section. It's a beautiful book, isn't it? I know. I I give credit to my photographer Matthew Benson, who who did a lovely job with the photography. It's very inspiring. Okay. So how can our listeners find out more about you and your book and and all of your information? Well, thank you so much. Well, the book is called The New Heirloom Garden, and I have a website, but the book is also available in bookstores everywhere. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm so thrilled to be talking to you about it. The book is, is only three weeks old today, and um, so it's very exciting. It's my fifth book, actually. I have uh, four other books on kitchen garden designs. Well, this this is a very beautiful book. I would highly recommend uh, hours of reading and and entertainment of just the looking at the pictures. Uh, but there's a lot of ton of, ton of great information inside of it. You've done a very well job putting it together. Well, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. When I started it, I actually um, had no idea what an heirloom garden was myself. So it took a lot of research and learning and and really falling in love with with um, a whole new way of looking at my garden. Well, Ellen, we greatly appreciate the little time that you've given us and our listeners and sharing information about you and your book with all of us. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. You are tuned in to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show, a program to help your garden grow better indoors and out. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Wild Delight has a complete line of premium feed for wild birds and other wildlife. It contains the finest ingredients for your outdoor birds. Fill your bird feeders with a selection of Wild Delight's premium quality mixes to have a yard full of colorful birds. Wild Delight's premium mixes are made with tasty nuts and berries and not just filler food like milo and cracked corn. Feed the birds the nutrition they need. This keeps your feathered friends coming back year after year. Find out more at wilddelight.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Have essential oils always confused you like they did me? Take out some of the guesswork with Simply Earth. The Simply Earth essential oil recipe box will help you gain confidence and clarity in using essential oils to help make your home toxin free. Here's how it works. You receive the recipe box with four pure essential oils, six recipe cards, and extras. Then you learn how to use your essential oils while making the recipes created by certified aromatherapists clear and concise step-by-step directions. Save money and detoxify your life. I got to make fun products that will detoxify my home while also learning safe ways to use my essential oils. The best part is these oils don't break my budget. Simply Earth's essential oils are 100% pure and come from the best farms from all over the world. Using essential oils to support your wellness doesn't have to be overwhelming. My home is one step closer to being toxin-free because I made the wax melts and more with the Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box. Visit simplyearth.com to find your recipe box and more. Straw Bell Gardening is all the rage. Get your bell started easily with the Bell Buster Straw Bell Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bell gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and bacillus bacteria, in addition to the fertilizer itself. Produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops. Start with the best to get the best, traditional or organic formula. Take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bell. Go to bellbuster.com to find out more. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Blue Ribbon Organics, Naturally Green Products, Ironwood Tool Company, Easy Step Products, Rinse Kit, Soul Brew Kabucha, Wild Delight, Rikon Vitova, Ship Drop, Bellbuster.com. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Hey! 
Welcome back to the Guardian with Joey and Holly radio show. Time for your questions are answers. You've got a question. There's a couple of ways in which you can get that to us. You can send it to us via the email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you choose, you can talk to us by calling us anytime during the show, after the show, whenever you have that question, to 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-SHOW. Well, Holly, uh, we had a question come in from Carl. He listens to us on Freedom 1570 out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he has uh, quite an instance, uh, inst- intensive question here, uh, lengthy, but very important. We're going to go through it piece by piece because it's information that's important right now and applicable. Carl wants to know, every year I start plants from in- from seed inside, tomatoes, peppers, herbs, peas, and so forth. Every year the plants grow, sprout to two to three inches, then stall. They don't get any taller or stronger. They stay alive sometimes but don't thrive. Sometimes they just dry out. They don't do very well. Um, For those that do survive, I put them outside, but they usually die at that time. They're too small. They they don't do well. Um, I have used growing kits with these expanding soil discs, the peat pots, and regular pots with potting soil. Nothing seems to make a difference. I don't have any south-facing windows, so I have very limited direct sun in the house. Um, could that be the problem? Is there anything I could do, or could it be anything else? Okay, so let's go through this piece by piece here so we can uh, help Carl, and I'm sure if he's having this issue, many, many other people are. Um, so the part of the problem is let's start with uh, starting tomatoes, peppers, herbs indoors. Good, good. Peas, not so much. Peas have a very sensitive root system that do not like the transplanting. It has, they have a high level of transplant shock. So you want to direct sow them. They can be planted very early as soon as the soil can be worked in your area. So that that's one there. We got that taken care of. Uh, other, uh, other things with the plants drying out at the, at the base of the stem, it almost sounds like it's dampening off. Now, dampening off is a disease, a fungal disease, that's caused by too much watering. And actually, the plant rots at the stem and the soil level. Uh, and uh, many of the plants will just fall over uh, and, and die. Uh, it also, if it doesn't kill the plant in that aspect, it will work itself into the leaves and then also can, can cause uh, other problems during the early growth cycles. And it's highly susceptible and infection uh, affected problem. So, the, other, the other problem is is that those those peat pellets, the expandable discs, are they don't have any um, they don't have any fertilizer n- nutrients. Nutrients. Yeah. So you would want to use a nice potting soil that has slow release fertilizer with some uh, vermiculite or whatever to help have those plants have some root growth and the vermiculite is for aeration, aeration and water yeah. sub- uh, allow, allows absorbance the, the roots yeah. to to grow. Um, so yeah, that's a good idea. Um, to go back to the uh, dampening off the fungal disease, you can at the time of planting, uh, you really anything, you can take a dusting of ground cinnamon. Cinnamon has antifungal properties, and you just dust it over the top of the soil of your seed tray or your cup, and you can water it in. It doesn't affect it if you water it, but that helps uh, reduce fungal gnats as well as reduce the chances of dampening off on the plant. Also, just keeping a fan at a light, low level, blowing over the area in which the seedlings are at. This can cause them to dry out quicker. However, it will mimic more natural environment of outdoors the wind blowing, stiffening and strengthening the stems, as well as keeping the moisture moving around. Right. So, yeah, so that's that's one issue. Now, um, we do recommend some type of grow light. Right. And we use the Happy Leaf LED. We don't have south-facing windows either. We used... Um, for, for years, for years we use Western West, West, yep. face, mm-hmm. facing min- windows, but a grow light is definitely wise. Uh, the, with the east facing or the west facing window, the plants would grow towards the light every day, and we have to rotate the tray, and they would grow again. So they did get what is called legginess or stretchiness. Not a problem with tomatoes. Big problem with brassicas, uh, peppers, and eggplants because there's it, you can't bury those deeper, and it's irreversible. So it's. Legginess, if you are finding that your plants are very tall and spindly, it's because they're not getting enough light. It's irreversible. You can't go back and go, I'll give them more light and they'll fix. It doesn't work that way. So the best answer in those situations is to restart the seeds. Um, So hopefully uh, we have helped you with that. Now, 
if you do choose to fertilize with a liquid fertilizer, um, we would recommend an organic fertilizer and only at quarter the strength that the package recommends. Uh, if you do a synthetic fertilizer, there's more than likely a chance that those plants will become dependent on that fertilizer because of the synthetics and the chemicals in it, almost like an addiction. And when you wean them off of that and put them in the ground and not feed them with that, they go south very quickly. So uh, some questions there that we've answered. Okay, next question here is, I'm interested in knowing if it is legal to turn my lawn in uh, my backyard into a vegetable garden. I'm in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. Help information would be appreciated. Appreciated. Well, most municipalities allow for backyard vegetable gardens. You'd want to contact your local city hall, town hall, whatever to determine. And then you would want to make sure that you call Digger's Hotline three business days before you dig. Now, uh, most places that I'm aware of have no problem if it's behind in the backyard. A lot of people, a lot of cities have that issue if it's in the front yard. Um, and certain cities have certain requirements that saying X amount of percent can only be X amount high, a whole bunch of stuff. Just plant a bunch of fruit trees in the front yard. Trees are okay in most places. Even some homeowners associations allows trees with that loophole, never saying it can't be a fruit producing tree. So just keep that in mind. Not saying that uh, we are lawyers or we know anything, but just some hints along the way. Okay. So, um, Somebody wants to know if they can fill their raised beds in the bottom with pine needles. The boxes are 26 inches tall. Very nice tall boxes. Um, not, not, not needed to be that tall, but many people may choose to go that height for uh, easier mobility. Uh, so you're not bending over. And there's certainly no reason why you can't basically use filler as the pine needles in the bottom of the raised bed. Many people feel that pine needles are acidic and they will acidify the soil garden myth, uh, though they are 3.5% acidity on the tree as they set, uh, when they fall and they break down, they neutralize to a 7 on the uh, acidity alkaline scale. So there's no reason that you can't do that. However, if you put a lot of filler in, let's say pine needles or a whole bunch of leaves, those will break down and what you thought was a level box at one point will decrease and compress a little bit because that material has dissipated into much smaller particles than what it once was when you put it in there. So you may have to continue to top off the raised beds every uh, now and then in order to get to the aquatic, uh, the, the, uh, the level in which you want. Uh, I've got time for one more here. Pete from Madison, Wisconsin asks, can... You recommend any good tasting cherry tomatoes to grow in large containers. Thank you. Yeah, so there are several cherry tomato varieties, such as Chadwick cherry, white cherry, black cherry, and gold nugget. Those all have really great flavor, and they are fun to grow. And with that being said, we are out of time, and we appreciate your time. Did you miss any portion of the show today? Uh, you can revisit that by going to your favorite podcast platform and searching the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Also, if you drop in the term Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, that will come up as well. Or you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Radio 5 tab at the top of the page. Or you can just uh, be make it easy. We can send you the link. You just send us an email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Say, hey, can you send me the link to your first show? And we will do that. Tune in next week. Don't miss it. We will be talking about, uh, we'll cover the topics of starting a garden. What does it really take? As well as many different gardening methods. We all know the common ones and maybe a few uncommon ones. We're going to go over a whole gamut of them that may be beneficial to you because not one doesn't fit all. As well as our guest will be co-founder of a really cool app called Seed Linked, uh, Dylan Bruce will be with us and answering your garden questions. So until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.